It says we're live. I think we're live. I'm way too close to the camera. All right, uh, let's make sure everything is working. Looks like it's on. Lighting is good. Ben's in the chair. Hello. Hot. Lights are looking a little hot there, but I think that's just the way it's going to be. Susan is watching. All right, we've got one watcher so far. That would be my wife. How cool is that? Uh, good to see you here. Thank you for joining us. All right, it is 9 o'clock Central Time in Chicago, Illinois, where we are. It is 10 o'clock on the East Coast. It is 7 o'clock on the West Coast. I am Ivan Zud, and this is Jatai Academy Live Online. Thank you for joining us tonight. The program tonight was scheduled to be 9 o'clock, so we're starting at 9 o'clock. You know me. I like to be on time, and Ben has agreed to join us today for a little bit of a conversation about facial hair grooming, facial hair trimming, uh, and in typical Ivan Zoot fashion, if you know me and you know my YouTube channel and some of the things I like to do, I like top five tips. So what I'm going to share with you tonight are my top five tips for facial hair service delivery, working with clients and addressing this uh, on a daily basis. So if you're ready to go, we're going to jump right into it. Um, we're going to kind of keep it light and casual. I went classic with the barber jacket look uh, here in the shop today. We are at Mike's Barber Shop uh, in Prospect Heights, Illinois, where I cut hair on a part-time basis in and around my travel schedule. Uh, so this is kind of my home away from home for hair cutting. And let's get started. Tip number one is consultation. And like any other service we perform in the professional beauty and barber industry, we don't pick up the tools and we don't start working until we've had the opportunity to consult with the client to discuss just exactly what it is we want to do and how we want to do it and what it's going to look like. So, oh, did I flip the camera around? I spun the camera around. We didn't want to do that. Pause for a second. That's our mirror. That's our television. Uh, you get to see some of these things. Oh, I figured it out. I've got the clamp on the uh, volume button. Now I've got to figure out how to turn that camera back the other way. Uh, there's six of you watching. That's great. Um, hang on a second. While we figure this. Here, here. There's my lighting. Um, there's Ben. Appreciate you being patient. Why, how do we spin that camera around? Um, take that out of the way. Swipe to reveal comments. All right. Learn by doing. Um, oh, there's spin the camera around. All right. I apologize. Thank you all for your patience and understanding um, as we get through this. All right. Let me get this pointed down at Ben. Number one in our top five tips is consultation. I want you guys to play fly on the wall. There's the wall, you're the fly. Ben and I are gonna have a consultation about his facial hair. How you doing today? Excellent, Michelle. Excellent, good to meet you. Thanks for coming in today. Uh, according to the appointment book, we got you down for a beard trim and a haircut. Is that right? Yes, sir. Excellent. How long has it been since you had a haircut? About two and a half weeks. Great question. How long has it been since you had a haircut? I love that question because we know hair growth rate is about half an inch a month under any and all ideal circumstances, barring, for instance, significant challenges in health and wellness. So if he says it's been two, three weeks, I know how much hair is new and how much hair he had approximately since his last visit. One of my favorite questions. Next question. So is that interval normal for you, about how often you normally get a haircut? Every three weeks, whether I need it or not. Every three weeks, whether I need it or not. Good to know. That's a great answer. It tells us how regular he is. It also tells us, in a certain kind of way, how relatively important this gentleman's grooming routine is to him. If you say to somebody, how long has it been since you had a haircut? And he says, eh, I don't know, maybe a month or two. And if you say, so is that normal for you? And he says, eh, you know, life gets busy and, you know, then I get in, I get a chance to get it. Not that this guy doesn't care about his looks, but this is somebody who's not as clockwork about it. Again, it goes to mindset. It helps us learn and understand our customers. So we're going to ask some of those questions. Now, you've grown the beard out for me a little bit because I asked him as I knew we were doing this. Normally, you do keep the goatee. Correct. And you're taking the beard off. Yes. Side one length about what you typically have there. Yes. And normally you take the goatee down at home in between haircuts with a trimmer on your own? Correct. With a guard on it. And I know because we've had this conversation a little bit earlier, he also shared that when he uses a guard, he goes with the growth direction. 
As we know, a basic principle of clipper and trimmer work is one blade, two lengths. One blade, two lengths. He knows this from his own experience. We know this academically in the business. Any one blade or guard will leave behind on the face of the head at least two lengths. One against the growth direction, the other moving with the growth direction. Generally speaking, against the growth direction, cuts hair shorter, and with the growth direction, correspondingly leaves hair about one half or one blade length longer because the hair tends to lay down ahead of the cutting device. Again, good information to glean during that consultation or conversation. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, did you hear that right there? So, if I'm hearing you correctly, that is a lead into what we call paraphrasing, where essentially I'm going to say back to the client what they've said to me, although I'll try to alter the language enough so that I'm not parroting exactly back what he said, but just different enough to confirm that he knows that I know what it is he wants. And we're going to look for body language cues from our client. We're going to look for relaxed shoulders. We're going to look for him to crack a little bit of a smile. Crow's feet pop up in the corner of the eye. This guy was like he was trained for this. I'm telling you. You know, he's a friend of one of my neighbors when I was looking for somebody online for this. He said, oh, you got to talk to my buddy Ben. He'll help you out for this. I didn't know we were going to get a trained actor for this. So... This is, this is just going to be awesome, buddy. I'm happy to have you. We're going to have to figure out something else to do for you another time and bring you back on video. You could become a regular. Sounds like fun. There you go. Um, so look for those body language cues because you'll know, kind of help you to confidently know that he is comfortable with you and we're all on the same page moving forward together. So consultation tip number one. Recap. We're going to leave the goatee and the mustache. We're going to take it down with the growth direction. I'm guessing with about a number one guard, we'll know that. And by the way, you guys that know me know that if I think it's a number one guard, what guard am I going to use? That's right, I'm going to use a one and a half. I'm always going to go one guard longer than I think it should be initially because 30 years in the business, and I still know how to be wrong every now and then, so there's a chance I'm going to be wrong again every now and then. And this kind of leads into our next tip in our top five tips. So we're going to go to one and a half with the growth direction. I'll probably switch to a one and take it down, and we'll be happy with it. We can go to a half guard blade open if that doesn't knock off enough of the ends, but we're not taking a whole lot of hair off. Then we're going to line and edge the goatee. We'll clean up the hair between the sideburns and the goatee in the general beard area. And he'll be looking good to go and we'll send him on his way. So that's the assessment based on our two thumbs up, three thumbs up if I throw mine in, uh, based on our consultation. Tip number one on our top five tips for face and beard grooming is quality consultation. Tip number two is assessment, where consultation is conversation, me and him talking, assessment is more me looking and maybe me even feeling or combing. I might get in there with a comb to see what he's got, get a feel for it. I'm looking for density and texture, two of the key indicators in facial hair of what we can expect for end results based on the work we're looking for. Now what I'm talking about here is this, and I use this example from haircutting. When we're doing buzz cuts, number one buzz cut on a little boy. If you've got a dark-haired client, maybe Asian, maybe Latino, uh, coming up towards May like it is on the calendar here, time for a number one buzz cut. You put a one guard on, number one buzz cut, he looks great. It's a great little number one buzz cut. But that same number one guard on a little blonde boy, you can rub his, hand with, his head with your hand. You can feel he's got hair you can't see any hair. It's the same number one, but color, contrast, color, skin tone versus hair color, and density and texture of hair, that same number one blade gives you a very different look. So where he's got some lighter color in through here, and he retains darkness, you can see in the center of the beard, in the mustache, up in through here, you have to take that into consideration when we're talking about length. That'll come from your visual assessment. The other thing that comes up in assessment is density. And he's a great example of density when we talk about he gets a nice, good, even, thick beard. He's got great full skin coverage on the beard. 
And you'll notice right in through this area, he's a little bit light. Not uncommon that there are areas there that don't fill in to the same extent. You'll also sometimes see in the upper portion of the cheek areas that do not fill in to the same extent. Now, if he goes longer and longer between services, some of that will fill in a bit. But we have to factor those areas of density variation into our assessment and into our plan. Not everybody can have everything. So there are times when somebody will come in with a request and you look at the client and go, yeah, buddy, that's a great idea, but it's just not something we're gonna be able to do based on what you've got going on here. So number one is consultation. Number two is assessment. Consultation was talking to him. Assessment was my own group of observational skills to see what we have to work with. We have a plan. I've had a consultation, I've assessed the situation, now it's time to get busy. As is the case with any service, it's gonna be cape and drape time. So we're gonna fold the collar in. This is my standard cape and drape procedure for any client service here at the shop. I believe in folding the collars in instead of splaying the collars out. The reason for that is when the collar is folded in, when I'm done, I'm gonna pop it out. Any hair that may have accumulated comes out as opposed to falling in. If you splay the collar wide, the collar pops up and the hair drops in. You do a beautiful haircut on a guy, nine o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, he loves you. In his 2.30 meeting later that afternoon, with half a little bit of hair down the back of his shirt, he hates your guts. Don't be that barber, don't be that hair cutter. Neck strips, we use them because it's the law, and we use them because neck strips speak barbering. We use them because it's part of what we do. I use paper towels. These are from Graham, these are wubby towels. Are these wubby towels? No, these are barbie towels. Um, I use those on the client as well as my Sanic strip, I tuck that in and lay it out on the shoulders. Then, of course, got to get them covered up with a cape. Now, my client friend of mine here grew up in the neighborhood I grew up in, and as I said, my neighbor's a friend of his as well, and I know, despite the fact that he's a good actor, he's going to crack a smile when he sees this, all right? There's no way, there's no way this guy's a White Sox fan. Am I correct? Sox fan. <laughs> no way! He's a Sox fan. Oh my God, I'm a Cub fan, my neighbor's a Cub fan, I don't know how this guy got into the group. He's gonna have to suffer through this horribly because we got the Cubs kid. All right, uh, and lastly, I use a robo collar. You guys have probably seen me use these live on stage in our videos before. Probably the single best piece of customer service in the professional beauty industry. This is that final gasket that really keeps everything on my side or his side of the equation where it needs to be. We've got them caped and draped. We've got them covered up. Number one was consultation. Number two was assessment. Number three is clipper and trimmer work. For our clipper and trimmer work, we're going to use our clipper and our trimmer to take down the surface and to line and edge the beard. I've got a number of different tools to choose from. I said we were going to go with a one, so I'm going to start out with my one and a half. I've got my blade closed to the triple zero position with a one and a half blade on there, and we're going to go with the growth direction, just knocking down. And you can hear, a little bit of hair cutting is auditory. You can hear when it's catching some hair, and it's also visual you can see some hair falling on the cape. So this is grabbing just a little bit, but I am gonna take it down one guard lower. A couple things to keep in mind, guard your guard. See my finger on the guard like that? Halfway through a haircutting experience, if the guard pops off and I chunk a hole in his beard, we got more of a problem than we do with the Cubs cape. We got a big problem here in this situation. So guard your guard, make sure you've got solid contact with the guard at all times as you're working. Also look for stability. I'm working at the end of an outstretched hand, but if I was concerned, he's rock solid, steady, stable, and he's not moving at all. But if I was concerned about his movement, I would rest an arm on his shoulder with the clipper in one hand and on one hand, in one hand and on one hand, for balance, stability, and control. Now, if he's gonna itch, twitch, wiggle, jump, or move, I can get away from him in a hurry to prevent an oops from happening. So I'm gonna take off that one and a half guard and I'm gonna pick up my number one. 
Then one guard going with the growth direction. Guard your guard. I'm now going to come in and take this down. And you can see a little more hair popping. I'm working with the growth direction. And that's actually laying in really nice. I'm thinking that length might be pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down as we've said we would. Then I'm going to grab my hand mirror and I'm going to have him take a look at it to let me know what he thinks of that general length. So I'm working with the growth direction, laying that down, coming up under the chin. And because he's a regular groomer, he's got a fairly good line going here in the first place. I think we're going to look pretty good. Let's let him take a look at that. Get his assessment. I'm going to throw that mirror up for him to look at that. Looks good. My kind of beard looks good? All right. Now we know we're on track for our target. Now I can hold in on doing the rest of the work here. Same thing with the mustache. With the growth direction is easy. Against the growth direction can be a beast sometimes. These clients have noses. And sometimes when we're coming up against like this, it's hard to get right up underneath it. Don't be afraid if you need to, to push somebody's nose out of the way one way or the other to really help you get in there. He knows you're trying to do what you've got to do, and he's looking for good results as well. And when you're working this close with somebody, if you smoke, clients are disappointed with you. If you're a heavy coffee drinker, you're right on top of somebody with cigarette breath and coffee breath, this is not good customer service. Get yourself a can of Altoids, chuck the cigarettes in the garbage can, and lay off the coffee in the interest of providing a proper customer service experience. If your breath can feel paint, if tonight's dinner was, you know, shrimp with garlic sauce, um, that may be a problem servicing clients behind the chair. We've taken that beard down with a clipper with a guard. Be aware of blade position. Be aware of guard length. All the things you need to do to really customize that look for a client. We're finished with clipper work. Now we're going to move on to our trimmer. I've got a couple different trimmers. I've got a T-blade right there on mine. That's a JRL 1050. That's their new three-piece B trimmer. I've also got a square blade on the JRL 1010. Um, the square blade is bump gap to zero. The T blade is not bump gap to zero. So not only do I have a square and a T, but I have uh, two different degrees of closeness in those blades for the work that I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and refine the lines on this now, working with the non-moving blade against the skin. And you'll notice he said it went a couple of days because I confirmed his appearance here for this program a couple of days ago. I said, hey, let the rest of it grow out for me just a little bit, which he did nicely. But I've still got a decent line that I can follow. Now, did you hear me say, hey, Ben, could you please tip your chin up, head back just a little bit? Did you hear me say that? No, I didn't hear me say that. He didn't hear me say that either. I didn't say that. I simply had put my hand on the top of his head and applied gentle pressure. He knew where to go. He was following my direction. I'm a big believer in communicating non-verbally with our clients very, very frequently and letting our body language kind of speak for us. Let me ask you a question, Ben. Put you on the spot here in front of everybody who's watching, watching live or watching on the rebroadcast later. Based on the way I handle my tools and move around the chair, do you get the feeling I've done this before? Absolutely. And that's what we're looking for. We would never ask that to a client in a regular service situation. Hey, buddy, you feel like I know what I'm doing? You want that to come through. And many times clients read that in the way you handle your tools, the way you handle the chair. I tend to be a little heavy-handed. I'll push and shove people around a little bit. I hope they read that as confidence, not recklessness. And I generally think that that's the case. It does take a little time and experience to develop that level of confidence behind the chair. But I got to tell you, once you get to that level of comfort with what you're doing, the business is really just a whole lot of fun and taking good care of people comes naturally and easy. So we're going to continue to clean up. This is our trimmer work to refine or define the lines and edges on the shape for Ben's goatee. Number one was consultation. Number two was assessment. Number three is our clipper and trimmer work. And again, notice two hands on the tool. Balance, stability, and control. The trimmer is in one hand and on one hand. That starts to sound like a bit of a mantra for me. I keep repeating it, but I really believe it. It's something that I really kind of stick to with my tools. 
as often as possible. In this case, one hand on the tool, but I'm stabilizing his head. And the nice thing about having physical contact with his head here, and if I leave my hand here, it just kind of feels weird to be doing that, but the reality is, I'm not holding his head steady. I don't care how big your guns are, his neck is a bigger, stronger set of muscles than your arm. You can't hold his head steady. He can put it wherever he wants it. So what are we really doing here? We're gathering information. We're reading the situation. If he's going to itch, twitch, wiggle, jump, or move, we will feel it in our hand light years before we see it with our eyes. And again, you'll see me do things like get away from a client, pull the tool away, push the head away. If he's going to sneeze or move or something awkward is going to happen, we want to be able to continue to take good care of him. Once I've got my lines in place, I'm simply going to go over the remainder of the beard area with my trimmer to take this area down as short as my trimmer will allow me to do it. Any mustache, bottom edge of the mustache to refine that. Again, resting my hand on his shoulder, the trimmer is in one hand and on one hand as we do that. We do that on the other side. Frequently will turn his head and stay on this side. Some of you, those of you who might be ambidextrous, can switch sides of the client and switch hands and go the other way. That's not me. See, when I went to the other side, I went right out of the range of the camera. I'm a right-handed guy, so I'll work the client's right side, turn his head, reach across, and work the client's left side, as opposed to switching sides on the client. And don't forget to use your mirrors. I've got one mirror over my station and another mirror on the opposite wall that are very, very important tools. When we do things like check the balance of the goatee left to right, we check height of sideburns, we don't run around the client to look at these things. We turn the chair, we use our mirror to be an effective hair cutter using that big powerful tool on the wall. So we're gonna take the other side down now and I'm gonna turn him a full 360. He'll walk right out of the frame on us there. I'm gonna bring the camera in a little closer. That's the longest I've ever gone without talking. All right, next tool we're gonna to introduce is the foil shaver. That's the Pro Foil from Andis. Um, I saw a beautiful new one this week. I'm just hot back from the uh, Connecticut Barber Expo, uh, every year Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I saw some samples with some hair cutters of the foil shavers coming out from the Babelist folks. Those look really slick and cool. Uh, Wall makes their five star. These are all out in the market. They've been there for a while. Uh, the Profoil is the one I have. I'm going to use this Profoil now to take this down. We're going to go in with our blade work next, but I'm going to use the Profoil to take this down, to take this fairly close. Makes my razor work that much easier where I can take things down that much closer right out of the gate. Again, yeah, turning the chair, getting myself to the other side. If you're anything like me, you shave in the morning, so 9 o'clock at night central time to be shaving is kind of an odd occurrence, but it'll mess you up for the morning if you go to shave again in the morning, and then you'll be able to shave a lot. And the profile only really cuts from very short stubble. So I run that profile up against the top of his head like that. He's freaking out a little bit. You and I both know it's not going to cut anything. Alright? It's really just for removing stubble. But once he's down this close, the process of getting the face shave off that with our uh, Jatai blade is going to be beautiful. It's just going to really come out nice. It's going to look good. I'm be very pleased with that. I have high expectations. So step number one was consultation. Step number two was assessment. That's right, you got it right. Step number three 
was clipper and trimmer work. We worked with our clipper and trimmer to take the surface of the goatee down, to line the goatee, set our cyber, and then we went in with our foil shaver to knock off everything in between. We're ready to move on to our next step. And our next step, of course, is the world where feather blades and razors and the Jatai Academy conversation really kicks in. You know we love our feather blades and razors, and Jatai brings these to us uh, from Japan the best blades in the industry, the best choices we have available. So let's talk a little bit about our blades. I use, especially for detail work, up over the top of the mustache, in through the area below the lip, I use my feather nape and body razor. Love this little guy right here. As is always the case, brand new blade. The blade comes out, and the blade goes away. Sharp spin, boom. There it is, it's gone. We put that blade away. I do not have a blade in my Japanese handle. Um, I was gonna use my Artist Club wood handle razor, but it turns out that one's in my other tool kit. I don't have it here in the shop with me, apologies for that. But we're gonna use our Japanese style. I love this, it looks like a butter knife. The weight and balance on it is fabulous. It doesn't fold or close, but it takes all of the feather, Shading blades. Those are ProGuard, my favorite ones to use in the shop. You'll get a good look at that when I take these out right up there in a the camera. Where's the camera? Check it out. That's got the wire wrapping on the blade. It's not it's focusing on me, so it's not focusing on the blade, but it's got the wire wrapping on it. That protects you from cutting the customer. And the exciting thing is there are many places like right here in Illinois where I am now where a cosmetologist who legally is prohibited from shaving with a straight edge can put that on the back of the neck and the sideburns and can really barber up, if you will, a professional haircut. So I've got a brand new Pro Edge or Pro Guard blade in my Japanese handle. I'm also going to pick up my blade tray and with my nape and body razor, I'm going to pick up my blade, the no touch system from Feather. We love that. That might have fallen off camera if you didn't get to see it. Let me get this up where you can see it. I've got my handle, inject or insert, pop it right out. And again, the nape and body blade features that unique wire wrapping, lets us shave amazingly close and amazingly safe. Now, we're gonna change some things up here a little bit. I'm gonna get a towel out so that I can have a towel to wipe excess shave cream off as I work. And we're now getting into the shave cream conversation. In addition to handles and blades, Jatai offers the Healthy Luxury Shave Set. And there's four items in the line. There's a daily facial cleanser that will be used to wash your face ahead of time. There is a shave cream. And the cool thing about the shave cream is it's a non-lathering formula. It remains clear. It allows us to see our lines and edges beautifully, especially when we're doing detail work in and around the face. Love that product. And lastly is our daily facial moisturizer. So we will use these products. I'm also going to showcase a few other things. Now, we all know, and it's off camera here. Listen carefully, you'll hear it. Hear it? That's our hot lather machine. I'm gonna turn, turn this right here. There it is, classic Campbell's hot lather machine right there. Um, hot lather, great for shaving. It's something we do in the shop, it's something we use in the shop, but time out. Do we wanna use it? I'm not so sure we wanna use it. And the reason I'm not so sure we wanna use hot lather is I don't sell hot lather. And I'm in the business to suggest and recommend professional take-home hair care product, and in this case, shave and skin care product, which is one of the reasons why I love the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Set. It's a per, they travel okay in terms of their sizing, so the TSA guys aren't gonna freak on you over it. You can take them on a plane. They're great quality products. They're perfect for use in service delivery, and even more importantly, You've got them up front on the shelf, clients can buy them and take them home when they leave, and it's a whole other revenue stream for your business. So, really cool stuff and an important part of the business. So, let's get set up to do a little bit of shaving. I'm also going to share 
One other product, and again, it's not a Jatai product, but I think we need to at least be aware of this product and talk about it. I use a cloth towel here. Um, this one is a product from I Love Being a Barber. It's their Shave Solution. Not a heated product, can be a retail product, but as I spray that in my hand, kind of lightly foams up like this. There are lots and lots of items like this out there in the category. And at the very least, I want to encourage you to learn about them, take a look at them, get to know them a little bit. Um, again, because they're retailable, but these are sort of some of the state of the art, just like the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream. Uh, stays clear, non-lathering, non-foaming, lets you do beautiful work when you can see. I'm just going to apply it so you can see what that looks like. It stays clear, wet, and shiny. And we shave right through that, and they're beautiful and they're slick. So I'm going to apply the Jatai product, and we're just going to work through one side of the face here so you can see what this is all about. And we will get Ben finished up. So shave cream. Here we go. Put some of that in my hand, and we're going to apply that to my client. I'm going to come right up to that edge, massage it in real good, it should feel nice, it should feel good. If I were doing a full face shave, I might knock him back in the chair and lay him down because I'd want to work the upper lip and I'd want to work my way through uh, under the neck and everything. I'll be able to do that without tipping him back in the chair. And sometimes based on my back and what's going on, I will do that in the shop in that same way. So I'm just going to work this first side because we may work slower than I would normally work in the shop. In a shop situation, I'd probably lather the entire client and work the whole way through it, but we'll split it in halves here because with my talking and everything, I might be a little delayed working through. Normally with lather or shave cream, I use the back edge of the razor to move excess product away. With these clear products, I don't have the need to do that, but you'll notice that Healthy Luxury Shave product it's coming off on the razor like that. It's not flopping up or foaming up thick and heavy. I'm applying tension or pressure on the skin. This goes back to your, you know, sort of barber school 101 education in how to shave. Um, but again, because we went over him first with the trimmer and the foil shaver, we've taken things down. Look how nice and clean and close that is. If we don't have a nick, we don't have a scratch. We don't have a bite, we don't have an ouch. It's looking real good. It's looking real slick and smooth. I'm gonna go right to the midline here below the neck, and I'm gonna quit. I've gotta clean up the top edge of the mustache, and here's where I switch to my nape and body razor. At the top edge of the mustache, the smaller blade in this compact area around the face makes it so much easier to get in there and work that line and that edge very, very nicely. Up underneath the chin here, I'm going to apply my tension or pressure. Clean that area. See, I didn't want his mouth to move, so I stopped talking. Isn't that the way it should work? Absolutely, and he smiles. But he doesn't smile when the blade was up against him like that. All right, looking good. Wipe up any excess. Okay, if we were running a half price special on shaves, I'd take his money and send him home. But now I got the other half to do. So we're going to spin him around here. I'll try to keep as much of this continually visible on the camera based on where we're working from. And again, a little bit of the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Cream. Put that in my hand. From my hand, I'm going to transfer it to my client. Yeah, that's my arm. You're not really seeing his head. I get that. I understand. But nobody commented on the video. Nobody said, hey, Ivan, we can't see anything. Get out of the way. Such a civilized crowd we have here. All right. We're heading about just over 30 minutes here. I was targeting about 30 minutes for this program, give or take. So we're running right out of time. I hope you guys on the West Coast have had dinner. If not, it's coming into dinner time. It's going to be bedtime here in the Midwest and on the East Coast. We're going to wrap things up for the night pretty quick. But let's recap as we get the last side shaved here. Step number one was consultation. Talking, asking the questions, 
Notice that fancy reverse backhand move on that side at the sideburn? Yeah, we do that when we need to. Absolutely. Step number one was consultation. Step number two, come on, you're with me on the recap here. Step number two was, let me hear you. That's right, assessment. Step number three, what was step number three? Step number three was our clipper and our trimmer work. Step number four, we're still in step number four. Step number four was our blade work, that's right. And then there's step number five. Now, we dabbled in step number five just a little bit as we got ready to shave when we started talking about product. I believe that step number five in the conversation of beard trimming, facial hair grooming, and all that good stuff, step number five is take home hair care product. It's the conversation about what we use. It's the recommendation of the take-home products that we talked about. Hang on, we're coming in here. Can you give me this? There you go. There's no word for that. You just have to show them with your face and then ask them to do it. That's right. Pop that out on you just a little bit. And... Okay. Uh, it's a suggestion or recommendation of professional take home hair care product. I believe you tell them what you used, you tell them why you used it, you share. Oh, I gotta get that top edge of the mustache on this side. See, as we check out our work, we notice anything we missed. We missed that little line right there. We did it on one side. There you go. Uh, we tell him what we use, we tell him why we use it, we make our suggestions and recommendations for his take home hair care product. Uh, we're going to finish with a little bit of our moisturizer now. This is part of the Healthy Luxury Shave Set. We use the shave cream. We didn't use the, uh, the daily facial cleanser on you today because we didn't start with that step here in the shop, but we did use the shave cream, we did use the moisturizer. It's a great three piece set, and I think you're going to be very happy with it when you use it at home. Did you hear that? I think you're going to be very happy with it when you use it at home. That's a sales technique called speaking assumptively. Notice I didn't say if you buy it. I didn't say maybe you'll buy it. I just said you're going to love it when you use it at home. That puts in his mind the preconceived notion that he sees himself in his bathroom in the morning, in the mirror, smiling and happy, using quality products. It makes that sale a foregone conclusion. Speaking assumptively is one of my favorite selling tactics in a shop and behind the chair. So we're going to apply that moisturizer. Don't be afraid to put that over the beard and the mustache as well. It's non-greasy. It absorbs in beautifully. It smells nice. Um, mild fragrance. I'd almost say almost fragrance-free, but there's just a subtle fragrance to it. Um, not going to clash with all the other beautiful grooming products that you use every single day. When we take him up front, not only are we going to go to close the sale with the products that we suggested and recommended, we're going to do a couple of other things. We're going to rebook his next appointment. Hey Ben, you said you're normally about a three-weeker. Today is the 24th, so you're looking at about the 14th. Yep. Um, Wednesday's like this, 9 o'clock. Is that good for you? Perfect. Lock him up in the book before he goes. Rebooking, the single most important non-technical skill you can ever develop to be successful in our business. And lastly, one of my favorite things is, it's my three-sentence technique. This is on the back of my bookmark. If you buy my book, Be a $100,000 Hair Cutter, you get the Clipper Guy bookmark included with it. And on the back of the bookmark is my three-sentence comprehensive behind-the-chair business building system. I'm going to walk Ben through the system right now. He will experience it the way your clients will experience it every client, every time. We wouldn't do it here at the chair. We would do it at the front on the way out the door. But get your arm out here, Ben. All right. Three-sentence business building system. Are you ready? Here it goes. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. My pleasure. I appreciate your visits. Thank you. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? So will. That's it, guys. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? If you do that, every client, every time, you will build and grow business faster than anybody else in the business. I'm Ivan Zoot for Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Go to Jatai Academy to shop for the great Jatai products that we demonstrated throughout this presentation. Go to Jatai Academy to watch all the videos I've posted there and all the videos that Jatai has 
accumulated from a wealth of quality, talented, beauty and barber professionals from around the country and around the world. Jatai is setting out to build an academy with the information you need to build and grow your business, and I'm thrilled to be a part of the world of Jatai and Feather products. Recapping, we saw the Japanese handle razor, we saw the Nathan body razor, we saw the ProGuard blade, we saw the Healthy Luxury Shave set, we saw a couple other things. We saw the cutting collar from the Robo Collar. You get those online at clipperguy.com. We talked about a couple of different clippers. Uh, I do sell JRL clippers on my website. We talked about Be a Hundred Thousand Dollar Hair Cutter, my new book, available on paper, available on USB jump drive, and available as a digital download, clipperguy.com, or, of course, the paper copy is available on Amazon. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's Wednesday the 24th, 9 o'clock Central Time. We're going to be back online here on Facebook Live for Jatai. If you missed this, you can watch it on the replay. If you jumped in late, you can pick it up and watch it from the replay. And all the other presentations that we do can be picked up on replay. We'll look forward to seeing you again here another time. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ben. My pleasure. Thank you.